Four Russian journalists went on trial in Moscow on Wednesday on charges over their alleged work for a group founded by the late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny. Antonina Faverskaya, Artyom Kriger, Sergei Karolin and Konstantin Gabov all deny the charges of involvement with an extremist group that have been levied against them. Faverskaya and Kriger worked with Sodavision, an independent Russian news outlet that covers protests and political trials. Gabov is a freelance producer who has worked for multiple organizations, including Reuters. Carolyn is a freelance video journalist, he has done work for Western media outlets, including the Associated Press. As the four journalists were led into the courtroom by police on Wednesday, a crowd of supporters greeted them with applause. Addressing reporters from behind the glass, Artyom Kriger cast the case against him and his fellow journalists as a cautionary tale and urged journalists still in Russia to leave the country. Antonina Faverskaya spoke about hope and suggested that, everything that is happening now, the darkness that surrounds us, it is not forever and we will definitely see the country that Alexei dreamed of and will definitely live in a country where there will be freedom, rights, where journalists and other people will not be jailed for their opinions. Shortly after the hearing began, the judge ordered to hold the proceedings behind closed doors upon a request from the prosecution, even though the defense objected to it. If convicted, the four journalists face up to six years in prison. Israeli military vehicles and a helicopter were seen on Tuesday at Israel's northern border with Lebanon. Earlier Tuesday the Israeli military warned several southern Lebanese communities near the border to leave their homes, shortly after starting what it called a limited operation against Hezbollah targets. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a warning Monday to Iran, which backs Hezbollah and Hamas. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach, Netanyahu said, just days after an airstrike south of Beirut killed the leader of the Lebanese Hezbollah group, which is backed by Tehran. Hezbollah's acting leader, Naim Qasim, promised the group will fight on following the death Friday of its longtime chief Hassan Nasrallah. Israel has also assassinated several of the group's top commanders in recent days. Qasim said the group's fighters are ready and the slain commanders have already been replaced. The Israeli army has been carrying out secretive ground operations to destroy Hezbollah infrastructure in Lebanese villages close to the border for the past year, military spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said Tuesday. Hagari said that the current ground maneuvers in Lebanon are an expansion of the previous year's operations. He said that troops destroyed more than more than 700 Hezbollah sites, including tunnels carved deep into the hillside. They included separate rooms for storing weapons and what seemed to be bedrooms outfitted with mattresses. 
Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since October 8, the day after Hamas sent fighters into Israel and sparked the war in Gaza. It's been almost a year since some 250 people were abducted from Israel, and friends and family are worried about their loved ones as attention turns away from hostages and north toward Lebanon.